guys, and welcome back to Reading Club. Today, I'm going to read you Franny K. Stein, Mad Scientist, The Frandidate, Chapter 6 to Chapter 10. Chapter 6, Everybody is Running for the Office. Franny stood up in front of the class. As you know, I'm running for the office of president, and now I'd like to present part two of my campaign, she announced. She pulled a tarp off the big hulking clown thing that Igor was holding on a leash. Elect me, and this can be yours. It was mostly a clown, but parts of its face looked like a kitten. It had soccer balls for eyes, and cake was leaking out of its ears. Behold your future, Fanny yelled triumphantly, although nobody could hear her over the sound of the children's shrieks and the wet, choking hacks of the clown thing coughing up a puppy. Fanny's classmates ran for the office to get the principal. Igor led the horrible creation out of the classroom, pausing only for a moment to eat some ear cakes. Sorry, Miss Shelley, Franny said, but I combined everything they liked. I don't understand. Maybe you should try to think of the class as they see themselves, an individual people, and not just as a group, as Miss Shelley said. Miss Shelley, you have to know where each voter stands on the issue. Franny wiped some goo off the coughed up puppy. So you're saying I have to be the exact candidate that every single one of them wants to be, wants me to be. I don't think that's possible. Maybe not, Franny, but if you're going to get elected, it will be because each person sees you as the best person for him or her. Chapter 7. The Little Sue and Little... Uh, sorry. The Little Sue and Sue. Franny walked into her lab. Igor took one look at her and brought her snooky fangs, her stuffed bat. Franny smiled a bit. Igor always knew what she wanted, even before she asked. Dogs are like that, she thought. She sat down on her chair, but jumped right back up with a squeal when she realized that she had sat on her chameleon. I didn't even see him there. Amazing how he can change to look like whatever he needs to, she said to herself. She sat back down to cuddle up to Snooky fans and have a think. Her parrot interrupted the quiet with a perfect imitation of Franny's squeal. Franny didn't like to be mocked, but it was hard not to admire how quickly this bird could make any sort of sound it wanted. Quite a talent, Franny said. Suddenly, Franny sprang to her feet, standing Snook fan, Snooky fans flying. That's it, she howled, and Igor ran for cover. A howling mad scientist can be a very bad thing. Sensing what people want, looking any way you need to, sounding like whatever you want to. The answer are here. They're all right here in the lab. Franny started activating various machines, her friend. Sorry, her fantastic mad scientist brain racing ahead to the next step, and one after that, and the one after that. Igor, fetch me my sewing machine. Chapter 8, Making a Stirring, sorry, Making a Strange Bedfellow. Franny took DNA samples from Igor, the parrot, and the chameleon, and just tossed them into her new improved automatic combiner. These animals had the special abilities to sense feelings, mimic, and change appearance, and Franny wanted those abilities. Her creation would have to be convincing, so she threw in a little sample from a cobra for its ability to hypnotize its prey, and a specimen from a spider, and a specimen from a spider for its ability to lure things into its web. She gave her creation nerves of steel so it wouldn't get She gave her she gave her creation nerves of steel so it wouldn't get nervous when it spoke in front of people. She added a handful of spicy peppers to give her creation a fire in its belly. A fire in the belly means that it will it will ready want 
It'll really want to win, she explained to Igor. Franny added a dash of pithin and a scrape of carpet. The pithin should give it a strong grasp of the issue, she said with a grin, and the carpet will make it an expert on where people stand. Franny threw it threw a few switches and the electricity began to cackle. She pushed a big lever and the iron rollers turned, uncoiling a strange floppy piece of fabric under the floor. It looked like a big gray bed sheet, but it was warm and soft, like skin. When Franny touched it, it wriggled and twitched. I think it likes to be tickled, Franny said, and she dragged the bed sheet over to her sewing machine. Igor held a pincushion for Franny and watched her cut and sew for hours. With each stitch, it looked like Franny might be assembling one of her typical monsters, except that this time, except that this thing had no guts, no spine, and only a very thin brain. Finally, it was complete. Igor, wait until you get a load of this, she said. And then Igor got a load of it. It wasn't really a monster. It was sort of a costume, or maybe it was more like a skin or a hide. Franny began s slipping it on. <clears throat> As she stepped into it, she seemed a bit taller right away, and her arms seemed longer. She pulled up the hood and stood in front of Igor, not li molding her strangely baggy suit. Modeling her strange, strange baggy suit. I'm so sorry. What do you think? She said, her voice muffled inside the skin. Before Igor could respond, the skin began to change its shape. Sensing that Igor found it scary and disgusting, the skin quickly took on the appearance of Miss Wizzywazzle, the host of Igor's favorite TV show. Igor didn't know what to think. Part of him knew this was Franny, but part of him wanted to believe that Miss Wizzywazzle had come to the house to visit. It works, Franny shouted, although the voice came out sounding just like Miss Wizzywazzle's. It can sense exactly what somebody is thinking and feeling, and it becomes whatever they want it to be. It's the perfect candidate. I've created the Frandidate. Chapter 9. The Self-Made Fran Franny walked into the classroom confidently. She was wearing the Frandidate skin, and since the Frandidate was sensing only what Franny wanted it to be, it looked a lot like Franny, although maybe a little taller and a little less uh, mad scientist -y. Before class started, Franny decided to go around the room and talk to kids one by one. She started with Mary. The friend of date immediately sensed that Mary was a little afraid of Franny and it transformed itself into a bunny wearing a dress. It could tell that man Mary liked penguins, too, and so a penguin pattern suddenly emerged on the friend of date's dress. Franny listened from inside and as the friend of date sensed other things that were important to Mary. Franny shared some of those strange connection with the skin, and she could tell exactly what Mary wanted to hear. Vote for Franny, and there will be more time devoted to dolls every day, Franny said through the friend date's mouth. Mary clapped and smiled. Franny made a note to herself that it elected she need to keep that promise. Franny navigated the friend date skin around the room. It grew taller for the kid who liked basketball, and even looked like it was wearing a uniform. Then it looked like a chef, a grandma, a superhero, and an elf. It changed its voice, its size, and even how it walked to suit each individual kind, in, each individual kid. The skin gave Franny the ability to sense what each kid wanted to hear, and so she talked about the things each kid liked. And sometimes Franny didn't talk at all. She discovered that the friend today could do the talking all by itself. It didn't have a big brain, but this talking didn't seem to require a lot of thought. Franny just sat back and enjoyed the ride, and after she had finished talking to everybody, Franny took her seat. Franny for president! Franny for president! All the kids chanted. Even the kids who had been running against Franny were cheering for her now. 
They surely didn't know what to think, but there was only one conclusion to make. Looks like we don't even have to vote. Franny, you win by a landslide. The words made the Franzate's skin tingle, as if it had received a little electric shock. It liked the feeling, and so did Franny. As president of the class, she might find it tricky to keep all the promise she had made, but Franny was a genius, and she was confident that she could handle the job. Chapter 10 from the pink house to the white one. Franny was delighted. She wore the suit all the way home, and if she saw people, the suit made little changes in itself based on what it sensed they wanted it to be. When she got home, she looked in the mirror. The friend today, again, sensing Franny's feelings, wiggled and wiggled and changed. In the mirror, Franny didn't see a little girl who had won a class election anymore. She saw a leader, the president of a country, the president of the United States of America. The thought made the Frandidate's skin tingle again, like a little more electric power had been run through it, and the sensation made Franny smile. Why not? She said, once elected, I can use my genius to do all sorts of great things for people. And if they choose to vote for me, it's not like I'm trying to take over the world or anything. It's their choice. Franny started to slip out of the fantasy suit, but the zipper stuck. And she couldn't get the suit all the way off. I'll fix the zipper later, she said, walking around with the skin halfway off. Igor, warm up my satellite snagger, she said, and Igor pointed the device toward the sky. Well, that's the end of this channel. If you liked it, please click many likes and subscribe reading club. I'll come back later with a new and improved channel. Bye, guys.